Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. This is Shaman Thomas. Yo, I got a quick story to tell y'all. I want to lay it all out for y'all. I want to be as transparent, real, open as possible with this video right here that I'm about to make. But lately in my spiritual walk, I have been battling something in the unseen realm that is so dangerous, it's so demonic, and it is so disgraceful. Like, I literally hate it. What I'm speaking of is gluttony excessively eating stuffing yourself knowing that you're already full just eating 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 and i know i'm more so on the thin side but i still can suffer from this sin i was still in bondage from it right and i'm just now breaking out of it the lord just broke me out of bondage of gluttony so i'm making this video right now but i just want to say prior to this video i had no idea how serious this thing was and i remember i would constantly say Oh, I'm just enjoying the fruits of my labor. Like, this food is good. You know, I'm, I'm a little thin. Like, I can eat. And that's the lie of the enemy. When you are satisfied, you are satisfied. It does not matter how your physical appearance is. If you're full from eating, you stop eating. You don't keep uh, uh, stuffing yourself. That is gluttony. That's sin. Sin separates us from God. And the wages of sinning is death. That's, that's final. Now, many people may say, hold on, gluttony isn't as bad as fornication it's not as bad as adultery it's not as bad as lying and stealing and killing but in reality it is because all sin will lead to death now i will admit that not all sin is the same because we got blaspheming the holy spirit that's an unforgivable sin fornication sexual immorality which is sinning against your own body but what do they all lead to they all lead to death now there were two things that i noticed i'm putting up for it but there are two things that i noticed with my situation my flesh and demons that's what i noticed satan and my flesh right so as christians we are called to crucify our flesh and the desires of our flesh we need to crucify those to the cross with christ we are to walk in the spirit because we have to realize that this fleshly body our fleshly desires they war against the desires of the spirit constantly are at war with each other and we feed our spirit by i usually have a bible on me we feed our spirit by this right here right here we this is how we feed our spirit we need to eat the bible says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of god's mouth this is spiritual food so just as our physical bodies eat and that's how we sustain our physical lives. We need to sustain and grow in our spiritual lives, which will come from absorbing his word, having it in our hearts, stored in our hearts so that we may not sin against him. Now, the reason that I brought that up is because I realized that not only was this demonic, but it was of my human nature as well. So here I am in the middle of the battle trying to crucify my flesh while also trying to slay demons in the name of Jesus Christ at the same time. So, for example, I would be eating food, eating it, Chipotle, for example. I would have one bowl, and then I would have another bowl. I wouldn't even be hungry, but I would just be eating, being greedy, being gluttonous. And I would feel the Lord saying, stop, stop eating, just stop it. And I'm like, God, I'm... Um, um, I want to, but I, I can't. It's just so good. I can't stop. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing this to my mind. All things are lawful to us, but not all things are expedient. Not all things are helpful. Although all things are lawful, not all things are helpful to us. And we are not to be brought under the power of anything except for the power of Jesus Christ, except for his authority and his authority only right and think of jesus christ he set you and i free from the law of death and the law of sin we are not to submit ourselves again to a yoke of bondage a yoke of slavery we walk in authority and liberty now with christ because he set us free so i'm eating it and i'm like okay this is a problem but it will go away because I will finish the food and i'll be like, okay i'm not hungry anymore and then i will get hungry again and i would say hold on let me um you know, let me go order a pizza. Let me go. You know, things I'm being so serious. I'm being so honest right now. And I don't even like, I don't, I'm going to be so honest with you. I don't like 
exposing myself like this, but I need to because people need to hear the truth. The truth will set you free. And Jesus Christ is the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. So I noticed I was just spending money, spending money, blowing it, blowing it on food. And this is when the demonic part kicks in. Because earlier it was my flesh. It was my flesh and I didn't crucify those desires. I keep having these cravings to eat, to do this, to do that. And I'm not crucifying them. I'm not using the word to chop at it. I'm using the word to read about everything else I'm studying. I'm not bragging right now, but I study a lot. I study the word a lot and I pray a lot, but I wasn't praying against gluttony. I wasn't using the word of God as a sword to cut at that spirit of gluttony and to cut at my flesh that was persuading me to be gluttonous. I wasn't doing it. I was just reading the word. Now, we need to be accurate. I spoke on this before because we don't we don't shadow box. We hit accurately. We use the sword of the spirit, the word of God, to hit accurately. So if I'm battling against gluttony, I'm gonna use scripture to absorb what's the opposite of gluttony. But I wasn't doing that. I was just reading and studying and whatever. So that's what happened. And back to the money part. So I started to realize that I'm blowing money. $10 on this, $10 on that, $10, 10 da, 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 da. That all adds up to hundreds and hundreds of dollars if I continue to go on, right? So John 10, 10, what does Satan come to do when he decides to show up? Steal, kill, and destroy. He stole my money, destroyed my finances, and he was killing killing my desire to crucify my flesh the bible says it says not to give any place no opportunity to the devil close every door i had all these open doors so he kept coming in oh let me get that ten dollars let me get that ten dollars let me get that ten dollars oh let me get that 15 let me get this let me get that he was just still in my finances and i look at my bank account and it's all food and i said god i got an issue i got a problem and that's how we get free from bondage. You have to admit that you have a problem because here I am studying the word. Here I am going out to preach. Here I am being in the presence of God all the time, but I'm ignoring gluttony. I'm ignoring the sin because I'm like, oh, it's just food. It's not. No, it is a big deal. God hates gluttony. He hates sin. He hates it. So earlier today, I woke up. <laughs> earlier today, man. And this is how I know, this is how I know it was the devil. But last night, I was spending a lot of time with the Lord and I was just jabbing at gluttony, jabbing in that other things in my spiritual walk. And I wake up and I just wanted a big, large pizza pie from Pizza Hut. And I ain't never wake up like that before in my life. Like I literally woke up, I gotta have pizza. I gotta have pizza. I gotta, I just want pizza. I want it, I want it, I want it. And immediately I realized that this was demonic because one, I don't even like pizza like that, but in my mind, it, the thought of it tasted so good and I just wanted to, I was like, nah, I'm not going for that. So I went downstairs, I had some grapes and I had a banana and some water and it filled me up a little bit, but I was like, I want pizza, I want pizza, I want it. So I started praying against gluttony and that desire for me wanting to have pizza, it was now decreasing. John 3.30, he must increase, we must decrease. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we got to let Christ increase. But um, I, w I went to the gym. Like, I'm just now leaving the gym. I was playing ball. And I'm like, all right. I called my mom. I'm like, yeah, mom, did you cook anything? And in my mind, I haven't made up that if she didn't cook, I'm going to get some pizza. So I'm like, yeah, mom, did you cook anything? She was like, no, nah, I didn't cook. So I was like, all right. I hung up the phone and I'm like, I break every spirit of gluttony in my life in Jesus' name. Every spirit of gluttony yank you out in the name of Jesus Christ by Holy Ghost fire. And right after I said that, look where I ended up. I'm at the supermarket. I'm at the supermarket, so I'm not blowing my money on fast food. I'm going to get something that's going to last a while, and I'm going to eat it the way the Lord wants me to eat it. When I'm full, I'm going to stop. But I could have ended up across the street at Chick-fil-A or Pizza Hut or anywhere. But here I am in a parking lot about to get some regular groceries, probably get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, something light, you know, but 
trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. You have to put your trust in him because he will get you out of gluttony. He will get you out of any sin that you are currently in, but you got to crucify that flesh along with his help and you got to slay them demons that's trying to come in through that flesh. We got to be soldiers for the Lord. We can't be lazy. The Bible says to be fervent in spirit when serving the Lord, meaning be enthusiastic, be passionate about serving him. Don't be lazy. Don't be lacking zeal when you serve the Lord because it's the best job in the world. And he wants to reward you. He wants to show off for you because, look, I don't even want pizza now. I'm looking at it and I'm just like, pizza hut's across the street. But I'm looking at it and I'm like, that's disgusting. I don't want no pizza. I'm not knocking anybody that eats pizza, obviously, but I don't like pizza like that. But the enemy tried to trick me into thinking that I was going to eat a whole I've done it before, a whole pizza pie by myself and then feel sick after. No, I'm not not doing that. And that's another thing too that they try to trick you with sin. Sin is temporarily satisfying. You could be in sin and be like, this is the best feeling in the world. I've never felt like this before in my life. And then after it's over, you feel depressed, you feel anxious, you feel tired, you feel lonely, you feel vulnerable, you just feel destroyed. That's what sin does to you. Satan appears as an angel of light, but he's the father of lies. So once he pulls you into sin and he gets you enjoying sin for a moment, he'll want you craving it even more. Like that's the thing, he'll trick you because you'll feel the downfall. You will feel the negative effects of sin. But Satan will lie to you and be like, nah, you just need to do it some more. Oh, hold on, let me try. Hold on, let me pitch to you this other sin. You should try this sin. Maybe you'll feel better if you try this. And it's a cycle that will lead you to death if you're living in sin. And if anybody is struggling with gluttony or any sin in that sense, draw closer to God and he would draw closer to you. Literally, cry out for him. Even when you don't have the words, even when you don't have the words to praise God or to pray to God, I recommend, this is what I've been doing today. I, I was reciting the Lord's Prayer over and over and over and over and over again because i'm like god i don't have the words yes i can speak in tongues yes he's going to make groanings for me and he's going to intercede for me but i want to just go over the lord's prayer and as i was doing that i noticed that it was chopping at something inside of me and setting me free and you know whoever the sun sets free is free indeed but i'm i'm just leaving it at that that was just a little quick story god bless you i love you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth if you need prayer um, drop a comment below. Definitely will pray for you. I love you. Keep walking with the Lord. Keep the faith. Stay strong. Be bold. Be courageous. Don't quit. He's with you every step of the way. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.